These people are efficient, professional, compulsive consumers. It's their civic duty, consumption. It's the new national pastime. It's consumption. The only true, lasting American value that's left, buying things. Buying things. People spending money they don't have on things they don't need. Money they don't have on things they don't need. So they can max out their credit cards and spend the rest of their lives paying 18% interest on something that costs twelve fifty, And they didn't like it when they got it home anyway. Not too bright, folks. Not too fucking bright. Consumption. This is the heart of the system. The engine that drives it. It is so important that protecting this arrow has become the top priority for both of these guys. That's why after 9-11, when our country was in shock and President Bush could have suggested any number of appropriate things to grieve, to pray, to hope. No, he said to shop, to shop, to shop, to shop. In order to understand where we are and how we have gotten to this point in history, we need to address those societal attributes which have greatly affected our social conduct. The most important observation in this regard is our use of a monetary system. In this section, we are going to address the mechanisms of our world monetary system, pointing out the consequences this type of organizational structure has produced. 1. The need for cyclical consumption. The roles of people in a monetary system are basically broken into three distinctions the employee, the employer, and the consumer. The employee performs tasks for the employer in exchange for a wage or monetary payment, while the employer sells a good or service to the consumer for a profit, another classification of monetary payment. In turn, both the employer and the employee function as consumers, for the monetary payments they obtain are used to purchase goods and services relevant to their survival. This act of purchasing goods and services is what allows the entire system to perpetuate thus allowing for the employer and employee to make money and thus continue consuming. In other words, it is the requirement of perpetual or cyclical consumption that keeps the entire economy going. If consumption was ever to stop, the whole system would collapse. This produces two severe consequences for society. One, nothing physically produced can ever maintain a lifespan longer than what can be endured in order to maintain the needed cyclical consumption. In other words, everything must break down in a respective amount of time in order to continue the financial circulation needed to power the economy. This characteristic could be defined as planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence is essentially the deliberate withholding of efficiency, so the product in question breaks down respectively fast. This happens both intentionally, with manufacturers timing their products for breakdown, often as soon as the warranty runs out, and indirectly, where profit-based shortcuts taken in production, usually in the form of cheap materials and poor design, translates into an inferior product immediately, with the failure of the product simply a matter of time. The second consequence is that new products and services must be constantly introduced regardless of functional utility, generating endless waste. The result of these two issues are nothing but unacceptable. For not only are resources being neglectfully used in products that are designed not to last, wasting human energy and materials, the amount of frivolous waste and pollution that results is staggering. In other words, waste is a deliberate byproduct of industry's need to keep cyclical consumption going. The obsolete or expired product is trashed, often to landfills, polluting the environment, while the constant multiplicity accelerates this pollution. To express this from a different angle, Imagine the economic ramifications of production methods that strategically maximize the efficiency and sustainability of every product, using the best known materials and techniques available at the time. Imagine products so well designed that they didn't need maintenance for, say, a hundred years. Imagine a house that was built from fireproof materials where all appliances, electrical operations, plumbing, and the like were made from the most impermeable, highest integrity resources available on Earth. In such a saner world, where we actually created things to last, minimizing pollution and waste, a monetary system would be impossible. For cyclical consumption would slow tremendously, forever weakening so-called economic growth. A monetary system would be impossible. A monetary system would be impossible. A monetary system.